It has finally happened. The touch effect has now been migrated to the .NET MAUI community toolkit and is now known as the touch behavior. Let's check out this one feature, the long press and how to implement that in your .NET MAUI app. The moment you've all been waiting for is here. The touch effect that was implemented in the Xamarin Community Toolkit has now been ported to the .NET MAUI Community Toolkit. And since we don't do effects anymore in .NET MAUI, this is now converted to the touch behavior. If you're not really familiar with all the history here, the touch behavior is a very cool functionality. It's a very extensive functionality that allows you to basically influence properties of any visual element in your .NET MAUI app based on touch or clicks, right? It also has support for desktop, so clicks with a mouse or tabs on like, you know, a button and you can rotate it a little bit. You can play with the opacity. You can set the background color. You can do all kinds of crazy things. A lot of people were using this in their apps and now it's available for you in .NET MAUI. So this shouldn't stop you from migrating from Xamarin to .NET MAUI. For this video, I'm going to go into one specific feature. If you want to see more about the rest of the features that I'm talking about here, let me know down in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe this video and I will go into that as well. But for this video, I'm going to focus on the long press, which is a touch gesture that is missing from .NET MAUI and all things aside from the touch behavior, the long press alone is, you know, super awesome functionality that you are probably using inside of your application or you should be using inside of your application. So the long press gesture is exactly what it says it does. It allows you to detect a long press. So if someone, if a user of your application is pressing a little bit longer on, again, any visual element inside of your app, it can trigger some kind of action. It can show a menu, some kind of context menu. Um, it can go to the next page. It can select something, multi-select something. That's kind of like the use cases that you see in mobile applications. Um, so that's all stuff that you can now do with this touch behavior. And let's just hop over to my Visual Studio and see how to get that implemented inside of your own .NET MAUI application. Here we are on Visual Studio 2022 on Windows. Of course, everything that I'm showing you here also works on VS Code, works on iOS, Android, Windows, all the platforms that are supported. Um, but I'm going to show you on Windows and Android today. And I just created a new MAUI project here in Visual Studio. Didn't change anything yet. Um, and what we're going to do is, of course, install the .NET MAUI Community Toolkit. So let's go over to our project, right-click, Manage NuGet Packages. Um, of course, if you're using Visual Studio Code, then you might install a... Um, um, extension that will help you with the NuGet packages, or you can just go into your csproj file directly and install the reference right there. And we're going to search for community toolkit.maui, and that should pop up right here. The latest version at the time of recording is 8.0.1. Um, that is the one that you want to have at the very least to get all the touch behavior goodies in there. So let's just install that. And we have to accept all the agreements and that kind of stuff. Of course, read them first. So we're going to install that. And whatever that does, we get a little pop-up with whatever initialization we need to do. But of course, I'm going to show you. So let's just click that away. And just for the VS Code users, let's go into our CS project right here. I just click on the project node, scroll a little bit down, and you can see like, hey, we added this package reference uh, with like community toolkit.maui. You can totally do this by hand if that's what you prefer as well. Um, but this is the way to do it. So we got that in place. Um, one thing actually while I'm here, if you do the um, default .NET MAUI template, it says like MAUI version in here, MAUI version, which makes the version the same as the workloads that you have installed with Visual Studio. If you install the latest community toolkit .MAUI, it will complain that there will be a package downgrade. So what you can do is set this to the latest version of .NET MAUI that is available on NuGet.org, um, 8.0.14, and that will make this whole thing work again. So with that out of the way, just a little side note right here. We've got that in, in place. We need to go to our MAUI program.cs. And here we need to add, you can already see the red squigglies coming up. Um, we can actually fix this by IntelliSense. You can see it says use MAUI community toolkit must be in here, right? We use that to initialize our plugin, to set up some things, to bootstrap the uh, plugin. So we need to do that. Um, and actually the IntelliSense is not going to help me here. This is not the right one. Um, so I'm just going to do it by hand, use, Maui community. Not sure why IntelliSense isn't picking this up, but there we go. A little typo in there. Use Maui Community Toolkit. And if we're doing this, we also need to use the right using statement at the top. So using community toolkit.maui right here at the top. 
Okay, that's everything we need to set up for the Maui Community Toolkit for us to use. So we got that in place. Now, whenever we want to use it, I actually had it right here from when I was preparing this demo. Um, this XML namespace typically isn't here. So we have this toolkit thing right here. And um, typically what you would do, it would not be here. So we are going to say XML NS, XML namespace is toolkit. So this is just your kind of like shortcut into um, the namespace of the .NET Maui Community Toolkit. This is basically the same as adding that using statement that we just saw, but now you're doing it the XAML way. Um, and to do it a little bit more easier, we have this toolkit URL. This URL doesn't really go anywhere, but this um, imports like all the namespaces that are inside of the .NET Maui Community Toolkit. So you don't have to list them all out. If that's what you want to do, you totally can, but this URL makes it a little bit easier. Now here for this image or any visual element, right? We have this image, we have this label, um, well, the button you can interact with by default, but let's do it on the image. I can just say, hey, image and slash image. So make this a closing one, right? And then inside of this image, I can say image dot behaviors. So this is something that each visual element has, right? This is just the behaviors concept that lives inside .NET Maui. If you don't know what that's all about and you do want to learn, let me know down in the comments and I'll make a video on that. Um, but for now, just, you know, know that this is there. And what we can now do is say toolkit, touch behavior. And you can see we have a couple of others, right? Animation behavior, icon touch, image touch behavior. So that's actually um, related to the touch behavior right here, mask behavior, all kinds of cool things. Again, I can't say it enough. If there's things that you see that I'm not explaining right now, let me know down in the comments. But the one that we're after right here is the touch behavior. And the touch behavior has like a bunch of properties, right? And a couple, a couple of those is long press, long press command, long press command parameter, long press completed, and long press duration. With those, just using those, you can configure this to recognize long uh, touch, uh, long press gestures and trigger code whenever you do that. So we're going to set it up as a command because we're using MVVM and data binding, right? So let's just do that. There is also the em uh, event in here. Um, so if you do like the long press completed, that's the event. So that's just in your code behind. If you prefer to use that, that's totally fine. Um, please do note at the time of recording, there is a little bug in there. If you did not hook up the command, then the event also will not fire. So you kind of have to do it with a command if you're using version 8.0.1. Um, but I reported this issue and we're going to fix it. So hopefully whenever you see this, um, you can just use the event as well. Um, and you should be using the command anyway, if you want to have clean code and all of that, right? So let's just do that binding long press command. And <clears throat> that's basically it. Well, we want to probably also set the duration, right? You can play a little bit with that long press duration. And you can see if I just do duration, default animation duration hovered or pressed. So there's a couple of other cool things in here, right? But we're going for the long press right now. And this is in milliseconds. So if I do 750, it's going to be 750 milliseconds. Actually, let's just set it to something crazy, like two seconds, right? So you, you can really see that I have to press it down and, and really have to get in there before this to work. Um, now that's cool. We've got this set up. Our XAML is ready and we need to go to our code behind. So our main page .xaml.cs and I need to set up that command here, right? So what did I name it? Um, I have this long press command right here. Let's copy that one. And I'm going to create a public property right here. Property. Um, I used a prop snippet. So just type prop and then tap and then it will expand to this whole snippet right here. And then I need to do a command and I'm going to name that. Whoops. IntelliSense is not my friend here because IntelliSense and uh, Copilot are fighting for my attention right here. Okay, there we go. So public command, long press command. Now we've got that. And let's initialize that here in the constructor. So my long press command is new command. And I can hook up some action here. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mimic the on counter clicked right here. So I'm just going to increment the button um, clicked so that it will increment each time that I long press this thing, right? So actually let's just show you, so you can see this actually work long pressed. So I will, I will add the long press right here. Let's do that. So we got that one that should work. Now let's not forget. I, I know I forgot this in an earlier video. Um, binding context is something we need to set if we're working with data binding and, and context and commands and that kind of stuff. Um, set it to this. So this is going to tell um, um, this page like, hey, my binding context is this. So that's just this main page as well. And then inside of this main page, this XAML is going to look for this long press command inside of its um, binding context, which is now main page. And it's going to see this long press command that we initialized with this new command right here. 
So that's really in a nutshell in 10 seconds, how data binding works, right? So we've got everything set up right here. Actually, I think then it's time to just run this application. So let's just start the Android emulator It's going to build our application It's going to build our project right now. Um, I have the Android emulator already set up. So it's going to bring that up in a little second here. And then Whenever we have that, we're going to see the default template application, the little .NET bot in the race car, um, everything is exactly the same. But now if I'm going to long press, actually the um, um, bot in the race car, the image that I put the long press gesture on, um, then it's going to show up that functionality that I just implemented here. All right, the project has finished building. It's going to deploy to my Android emulator. It's going to start the application right here. And we should see everything that I just subscribed if I did everything well. Um, of course, I'm going to use my mouse because this is the emulator. But if you would do this on a physical device, which is totally possible as well, you could just really see the tap in there, right? So let me just do that. I need to hold it for two seconds. Keep your eyes on the purple button right here. Click me. Um, so I'm just going to go there. Click one, two. And you can see long pressed one time, right? So this is going to be a long demo. I'm going to hold it down again. And you can see it increments to two times. And I'm just going to, while I'm talking, I'm just going to keep doing it. So you can see really long presses. And if I just do it once, right, you can see my mouse right here, click, click just once, nothing happens. I really have to tap it like a long time. Now it's going to actually um, long press multiple times, right? So it's going to actually do that thing right here. And that's how you can implement this long press gesture with the touch behavior that's now available in the .NET MAUI community toolkit. How cool is that? How are you going to use this long press gesture inside of your application? I'm very curious to know if you have something to share. If you have some project to show, please let me know down in the comments as well. Also, if you want to see something different from the .NET Maui Community Toolkit or anything else, let me know down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the other video, which might just well be this suggested one because this is a pretty great one. You should check it out. See you there.